Good eye mites. I have two books this week to take a look at. One is fiction, one is nonfiction. If you can see which one you think is fiction, please point to it. If you think you see which one is nonfiction, point to that one. Okay. I'm going to read this one first. This is the fiction one. It's called The Singing Snake. It's by Set Stefan Zernecki and Timothy Rhodes. If we were in building, we'd be doing some of this dot art, called Aboriginal dot art. And you can see in this type of art, there is a form or shape, in this case, because it's about a snake, this form is a snake, and then dots. Instead of coloring or painting, dots are used. That has been used in European paintings in the about 1880s, 150 years ago, where Aboriginal people, first peoples in Oceania and specifically in Australia, did dot paintings for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's usually the first people's art that I teach when I do my world and I. I do Aboriginal dot painting and dot art. The Singing Snake by Stefan Zernecki and Timothy Rhodes, and it's illustrated by Stefan Zernecki. So he's both an author and an illustrator. Long ago, on a great island in the middle of the ocean, you know where that is, there lived a collection of creatures found nowhere else in the world. They all clattered at once, and their voices were harsh and loud. The island was the noisiest place you could imagine. Tired of the raucous sounds, old man said he would make a musical instrument in honor of the creature who developed the most beautiful singing voice. All day and all night, the animals and birds sang and sang, each trying to sing louder than the others in order to be noticed by old man. The voices were more musical, but the sound of so many different animals singing at the same time made such a din that no one could sleep. You can see the dot art in the image there. Also, it's in the border around that. Reminds me of the Jan Brett books. Enough, said old man one day. We will all gather together, have a proper contest, and settle, it, settle this once and for all. I need some sleep. You can see the dot art again. A large, colorful snake listened to Old Man and thought about his chances. He wanted to win the contest, but he knew that he only had an average singing voice. It would never be judged the best. He listened carefully to the other contestants. Lark has the most beautiful voice. Snake finally decided. You can see the art up close. Day after day, Snake hid in the grass beneath the trees and listened to Lark sing. At night, he went off by himself to practice. But no matter how hard he tried to imitate Lark's voice, the only result was a sore throat. After a while, Snake knew that he would never, never win the contest. He became very jealous of Lark's voice. I think I hear a problem coming. Jealous of Lark's voice. One day, Lark flew down from a tree near Snake and began to hop around on the ground, picking at insects. Snake noticed how very small Lark was. Hmm, he was getting an idea. If I swallowed Lark whole, and was very careful not to harm her, and held her just at the back of my throat, then I'm sure I could borrow her voice for the song festival. Oh, this is getting dastardly. Uncomfortable plans, dastardly. 
Once Snake had made up his mind, he quickly swallowed Lark. She began to sing in protest, but her song appeared to be coming from Snake. This will work perfectly, thought Snake. He hastened off to the festival. Can you see Lark in Snake's throat? Oh, poor bird. Whenever he encountered another animal all along the way, Snake would smile, taking care that his teeth blocked Lark's escape. When Snake smiled, the light shone through his teeth, and Lark began to sing. Everyone thought Snake was singing, and they marveled at his magnificent voice. Your voice is certainly much improved from last year, said Platypus. Snake has obviously been taking singing lessons, remarked Leerbird, somewhat peevishly. I wish I had a voice as enchanting as Snake's, whined Dingo. Those are all animals from Oceania, specifically Australia. Platypus, Dingo, Leerbird. Liar bird, depending on who I pronounce that. pronounce that. Snake smiled serenely and continued on his way. As he approached the festival, he met more and more creatures. They all expressed amazement at his brilliant voice. Even the other birds were filled with wonder when Snake sang. It's almost as if Snake were a bird, said Emu admiringly. Hmm, we know the truth. Such a sorrowful and anguished song, added Cockatoo. It makes me want to cry. Yeah, cry for Lark. He's stuck in the snake's throat. The song festival was ready to begin. When all the participants were assigned places on the program for the contest, Snake didn't wait his turn. He squeezed his way between blue-tongued lizard and long-necked tortoise, to the front of the line. Whoa! He's even cutting the line. Bam. Then he reared himself up, held his head in the air, and smiled. The sunlight struck Lark, and she began to sing. This is deceitful. Pretending to be something that he's not deceitful. Her song was so sad and so beautiful that every animal was soon in tears. Even crocodiles' tears were for real. Goodness, how sad that must have sounded. The other contestants agreed that Snake's song was so fine and his voice so perfect that he should win the contest. Red Spiny Liner Lizard Echidna, honey ant, frilled lizard, kookaburra, pelican, frog, wallaby, lorikeet, kangaroo, all animals from Australia. And the others did not even bother, did not even bother to compete. Gosh, I think he's going to win this dishonestly. Old Man agreed and named Snake the winner of the contest. I will go now, he said, and make my musical instrument in Snake's shape. Instead of a lark shape, you know. After Old Man had gone, the animals gathered around Snake Please, Snake, sing us an encore, they begged. That means one more, one more song, an encore. Snake smiled again. But this time, instead of singing, Lark began to scratch at Snake's throat with her little feet. Scratch, 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 scratch. See right there. Oh, I bet you can figure out what... Have when his, his voice gets scratchy, you know. Snake's cheeks bulged out as he tried not to cough. 
His eyes bulge too. Boom. A faint sound like a hiss came from his mouth. Lark continued to scratch with her little feet. Scratch, 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 scratch. Finally, Snake could stand it no longer with a loud hack. He coughed and his mouth opened wide. Lark quickly flew to the safety of a tree branch and began to sing a glorious, glorious song of freedom. Oh, I'm glad she got out. All the creatures were so delighted with song, the song that Lark was singing that they were distracted for a moment. Snake quickly hid in another tree, pretending he was a branch. Deceitful. When Locke's song was finished, the creatures noticed that the snake had disappeared. Now they were very angry. He cheated us, they said. He was horrible to Lark. We should never speak to him again, said Koala, nor trust him, added Flying Squirrel. Yeah. When all the animals had gone, Snake came down from the tree, and just as he reached the ground, Old Man returned with his instrument. It looks like you, Snake, Old Man said, showing Snake the great horn that he had made. The sound isn't as sweet as your voice. Old Man blew into the strange instrument a low, rich, humming sound. <whistles> filled the air. Have you heard that kind of instrument before? Snake said nothing and slithered off, slithered off into the tall grass in shame. He should be ashamed. No one ever did speak to Snake again. After a while, he forgot how to speak to himself. All he could do is make a sound, as if something were going scratch, scratch, scratch in his throat. The singing snake.